Hello students how are you all this is anup sir your english teacher students in this video we are going to study our new lesson from women's book that is lesson number 3 ishwaran the storyteller for class 9 which is written by r k lakshman students the writer r k lakshman's full name is rasipuram krishna swami ayer lakshman He was born on 24th October 1921 and died on 26 January 2015. He was an Indian cartoonist, illustrator and humorist. He is best known for his creation The Common Man and for his daily cartoon strip You Said It in the Times of India which started in 1951. One of his series of stories were telecasted on television named Malguri Days. Students, before we begin with the lesson, let me give you a small introduction about this lesson. Students, the title of this lesson, Ishwaran, the storyteller, tells us that the story is about Ishwaran. He is called the storyteller. because as storytelling is an art he is good at it ishwaran uses special effects does voice modulation uses his body language to make the story realistic so that the listener gets attracted and captivated in his story the writer wants to highlight this quality of ishwaran that he was so good at telling stories that they appeared to be real so let's begin with the lesson the story was narrated to ganesh by a young man mahendra by name he was a junior supervisor in a firm which offered on hire supervisors at various types of construction sites factories bridges dams and so on mahendra's job was to keep an eye on the activities at the work site he had to keep moving from place to place every now and then as ordered by head office from a coal mining area to a railway bridge construction site from there after a few months to a chemical plant which was coming up somewhere students here the meaning of the word supervisor is a person whose job is to check the work of all the other people so students at the beginning of this lesson the writer introduces two characters those are mahendra and ganesh now this story about ishwaran is narrated to ganesh by mahendra Mahendra worked as a junior supervisor in a company which provided supervisors to various construction companies on rent. He got posted at different sites like factories, bridges and dams which were under construction. Mahendra's work was to keep an eye on all the other workers at the site. He had to change places often. and work at various places like coal mine railway bridge construction site and the construction site of a chemical plant he was a bachelor his needs were simple and he was able to adjust himself to all kinds of odd conditions whether it was an ill equipped circuit house or a makeshift canvas tent in the middle of a stone quarry but one asset he had was his cook ishwaran the cook was quite attached to mahendra and followed him uncomplainingly wherever he was posted he cooked for mahendra washed his clothes and chatted away with his master at night he could weave out endless stories and anecdotes on varied subjects students The meaning of the word bachelor is a person who is unmarried. 
the word makeshift means temporary the word query means mine the word asset means advantage the word anecdote means a short amusing or interesting story about a real incident or person so students as mahendra was unmarried he did not have any family so he did not have any kind of high desires he was able to live in these temporary quarters provided at the construction sites he adjusted well in the circuit house which did not provide the basic amenities or even the tents which were temporary in nature mahindra had an advantage he was accompanied by his cook ishwaran ishwaran was very close to mahindra and accompanied him everywhere without complaining he did not complain about tough conditions in which he had to live he cooked food for him washed his clothes and gave him company by talking to him at night ishwaran had a quality that he was good at telling stories and he entertained mahindra with his stories which were based on different subjects ishwaran also had an amazing capacity to produce vegetables and cooking ingredients seemingly out of nowhere in the middle of a desolated landscape with no shops visible for miles around he would miraculously conjure up the most delicious dishes made with fresh vegetables within an hour of arrival at the zinc sheet shelter at the new workplace students the word desolated means uninhabited or empty conjure up means to gather or create with magic zinc sheet shelter means a temporary place to live with the roof made of metallic sheets so students mahendra tells ganesh that ishwaran was a great cook whenever they shifted to a new location he would gather all the vegetables and other ingredients out of nowhere required by him to cook in no time as they lived at a place which was not inhabited by many people in temporary shelters with roofs made of metallic sheets it seemed as if he would do some magic and gather all the ingredients and vegetables out of nowhere mahendra would be up early in the morning and leave for work after breakfast carrying some prepared food with him meanwhile ishwaran would tidy up the shed wash the clothes and have a leisurely bath pouring several buckets of water over his head muttering a prayer all the while it would be lunch time by then after eating he would read for a while before dozing off the book was usually some popular tamil thrillers running to hundreds of pages its imaginative descriptions and narrative flourishes would hold ishwaran in thrall students here the word muttering means speaking in a low voice dozing off means falling asleep narrative flourishes means detailed descriptions in thrall means the state of being in someone's power so students mahendra would wake up early in the morning get ready and leave for work after eating his breakfast he would carry his lunch along with him after he left ishwaran would clean their living place wash mahendra's clothes and have a nice bath he would take many buckets of water and pour water on his head while muttering a prayer after that he would eat his lunch and read his favorite book in tamil language ishwaran would get carried away with the details and descriptions given in the book that he read then he would go off to sleep 
his own descriptions were greatly influenced by the Tamil authors that he read. When he was narrating even the smallest of incidents, he would try to work in suspense and a surprise ending into the account. For example, instead of saying that he had come across an uprooted tree on the highway, he would say, with eyebrows suitably arched and hands held out in a dramatic gesture, the road was deserted and I was all alone. Suddenly, I spotted something that looked like an enormous bushy beast lying sparveled across the road. I was half inclined to turn and go back, but as I came closer, I saw that it was a fallen tree with its dry branches spread out. Mahindra would stretch himself back in his canvas chair and listen to Ishwaran's tales uncritically. Students, here the word agd means curved. The word gesture means a movement of hands or head to indicate something. The word deserted means empty. The word enormous means huge. So students, as Ishwaran read stories with detailed descriptions, he narrated them in the same way. Mahindra recollects that he would narrate even a smallest incident with a lot of suspense and surprise, which made it very interesting for the listener. Then he gives an example that instead of saying that he was walking down the highway and he came across a tree which had broken and had fallen on the road, Ishwaran would use his facial expressions and body language to narrate it. He would say that the road was empty and he was all alone. This would create suspense in the listener's mind. Then he would say that all of a sudden he saw that a huge beast was lying across the road. As he walked ahead, his mind was telling him to turn and go back home. As he reached closer, he saw that it was a tree that had fallen and was lying on the road. The branches of the tree had spread out and seemed as if it was a huge beast. Mahindra says that this talent of Ishwaran made the simple story very interesting and it captivated him, although he knew that some of these stories were not true. But the way in which Ishwaran narrated them was so interesting that Mahendra would not say anything and would lie on his canvas chair, rest on it and listen to his story quietly. The place I come from is famous for timber, Ishwaran would begin. There is a richly wooded forest all around. The logs are howled onto the lorries by elephants. They are huge, well-fed bees. When they turn wild, even the most experienced mahat is not able to control them. After the prologue, Ishwaran would launch into an elaborated anecdote involving an elephant. Students, here, the word timber means wood that has been processed for commercial purpose. The word howled means transported. The word prologue means an introductory speech. The word elaborate means detailed. So students, Mahendra recollects another story told by Ishwaran. Ishwaran said that his native village was surrounded by a huge forest which was full of trees. The huge logs of timber were sold for commercial purpose. They were transported into the vehicles by elephants. They were huge elephants and if they became mad, they would get out of control. And even the most experienced mohat 
would not be able to control them. This introductory session would be followed by a detailed story involving an elephant. One day, a tusker escaped from the timber yard and began to roam about, stamping on bushes, tearing up wild creepers and breaking branches at will. You know, sir, how an elephant behaves when it goes mad? Ishwaran would get so caught up in the excitement of his own story that he would get up from the floor and jumping about, stamping his feet in emulation of the mad elephant. Students, here the word tusker means an elephant. Roam about means move around. Stamping means hitting with force. Emulation means effort to match or surpass a person by imitation or copying. So students, the story was narrated as follows. One day, an elephant escaped from the timber yard and roamed around the forest. It stepped onto the branches and crushed them, tore the creeper plants and broke branches of the trees which came on its way. Ishwaran asked Mahendra whether he knew how a mad elephant behaved in order to make his story more effective. Ishwaran stood up and jumped around the place, hitting his foot onto the ground in order to copy the activities of the mad elephant which had happened in the story. The elephant reached the outskirts of our town, breaking the fences down like matchsticks. He would continue. It came into the main road and smashed all these stalls selling fruits, mud pots and clothes. People ran helter-skelter in panic. The elephant now entered a school ground where children were playing, breaking through the brick wall. All the boys ran into the classrooms and shut the door tight. The beast grunted and wandered about, pulling out the football goalpost, tearing down the volleyball net kicking and flattering the drum kept for water and uprooting the shrubs. Meanwhile, all the teachers had climbed up to the terrace of the school building. From there, they helplessly watched the depredation of the elephant. There was not a soul below on the ground. The streets were empty, as if the inhabitants of the entire town had suddenly disappeared. Students, here the word outskirts means outer area. Helter, skelter means here and there. The word panic means sudden fear causing unthinkable behavior. The word grunted means made a loud sound. Depredation means attacks which were made to destroy something. So students, as the elephant reached the outer boundary of their town, it broke the fences. The fences seemed as if they were like matchsticks for the huge elephant. The elephant reached the main road and broke all the stalls selling different things like fruits, mud pots and clothes. The people in the town were scared. so. They ran here and there. Then it broke the wall of a school and entered the ground where the students were playing. All the students ran back into the classroom and closed their doors tightly. The elephant made loud noise and roamed around in the school ground. It broke the goal post in the football ground, tore the net that had been put up in the volleyball court, stepped on the water drum and broke it and tore many plants as well. The teachers had climbed onto the roof of the school building and watched helplessly as the elephant destroyed the school property. There was not even a single person to be seen around. All the streets of the town were empty as all the people 
were scared of the mad elephant. I was studying in the junior class at that time and was watching the whole drama from the rooftop. I don't know what came over me suddenly. I grabbed the cane from the hands of one of the teachers and ran down the stairs and into the open. The elephant grunted and menacingly swung a branch of a tree which it held in its trunk. It stamped its feet, kicking up a lot of mud and dust. It looked frightening, but I moved slowly towards it, stick in hand. People were watching the scene hypnotized from nearby housetops. The elephant looked at me, red-eyed ready to rush towards me. It lifted its trunk and trumpeted loudly. At that moment, I moved forward and mustering all my force, racked its third toenail on the quick. The beast looked stunned for a moment. Then it shivered from head to foot and collapsed. Students, here, the word hypnotized means to influence control or direct completely as by personal charm, words or domination. The word mastering means putting together. The word rack means hit noisily. The word collapsed means fell. So students, at the time of the incident, Ishwaran was studying in one of the junior classes in the school. He was watching the elephant from the rooftop. Suddenly, he took the stick from one of the teachers and ran downstairs towards the school ground. The elephant made a loud noise when he saw a small boy approaching it. It lifted a branch of a tree in its trunk, hit its foot on the ground which threw a lot of mud and dust in the air. The elephant was threatening Ishwaran, but the boy was not afraid of it. With the stick in his hand, he moved towards the elephant slowly. Many people had climbed onto the rooftops of their houses and were watching the incident. They were standing still and were waiting to see what was happening. Ishwaran saw that the elephant had red eyes which were full of anger. It again lifted its trunk and made a loud noise as it was about to attack Ishwaran. Just then, Ishwaran gathered all its force and hit the elephant's third toenail quickly. The elephant was shocked at what had happened. Then it reacted by shivering all over and then fainted and fell onto the ground unconscious. So students, uh, this is all about this video. We will continue this lesson in the next video. Till then, this is Anup sir saying thank you and goodbye.